Barbers and stylists of Reddit, what is something someone in the chair told you that they really should have told their therapist instead? When I was in beauty school I was paired with a nervous, mousy woman who spent half the haircut frantically texting with her husband who was clearly laying on the pressure to control her. Every message was where are you, how much are you cutting off, you said you'd be done by now. He started calling her non-stop when she let it slip that a guy was doing her hair. By the end she was even more of a wreck than when she came in, and I felt with absolute certainty that he was gonna beat her sometime a little later. It was absolutely chilling. I felt so helpless to help her sad. Oh lord. That's so sad. I overheard a co-worker's conversation where her client was raped the evening before. She was crying and saying how she wanted her hair cut off and she was going to press charges. I promptly exited that situation. As a male stylist, not a lot makes me uncomfortable and that definitely did. I remember that feeling. I want to make myself unattractive so this will never happen again. Two of them. First client asks me if I was pregnant with a boy, yes. She then proceeded to tell me how her 4 month old son had recently died of SIDS. She laid him in his crib, asleep and left to go to the store. Her parents were over to help watch him. They checked on him 20 minutes later and he was gone. I was pregnant with my first child and didn't know how to react. I comforted her and cancelled the rest of my appointments for the day. I went home, held my stomach and cried. Second client had told me her, pastor, husband had given her an STD. Apparently. He was sneaking around with a couple of the unwed young mothers that he started a support group for. She was sobbing uncontrollably and I could only hug her and tell her how sorry I was. You sound like an incredibly kind and professional person. After 15 years of being a professional groomer monkey, you hear all kinds of crazy. One of my fabs, this sweet-eyed brunette started her confession about coming back after a day of shopping. We have all been in this same situation. Walking up to your door, hands full of things, comes a powerful urge to pee, all the while frantically struggling to find keys. The worst. Only this time she describes having some pretty severe diarrhea earlier that day. While going through her things she hears her cat on the other side of the door meowing. Finally able to open up her door, she is running with dire urgency towards the bathroom, as her kitten runs alongside her. She is unbuttoning her trousers. She makes it to the toilet does a swift 180 while pulling her pants down. This particular cat has a bad habit of drinking from the toilet and in the very moment she is speedily going to sit the cat jumps up on the seat. Unable to contain her volcanic bowel pressures, she sits on her cat, forcing the cat inside the bowl. She then shoots all over her beloved cat. This particular cat has a bad habit of drinking from the toilet. Not anymore. I'd just like to say it often happens the other way around. Back in college I was broke so I couldn't afford a proper salon, so I went to the beauty school to be a guinea pig for $9. Like the third time I went there, there was this chick that in 6 minutes went from high to so that's how I ended up in jail for fraud, but I did it for my kids, you know. Turns out she went from town to town advertising bulls raffles for a chance to win TVs, laptops, game consoles, etc. She sold a bunch of tickets for like $10 to gullible people and disappeared with the money. She eventually got busted. Served her 3 or 4 years. I don't remember. Sentence and started over and enrolled in beauty school. I wasn't particularly concerned by any of it. It's just weird that she told all that right off the bat to a complete stranger. That's kind of demo. That type of story sounds like something someone in Skyrim would share with you. For me it was the other way around. She asked me how I was so I asked her how she was out of politeness. She started crying and told me about all the problems she had with her boyfriend. Her hands were shaking so badly that she cut about 3 inches of my hair that she wasn't supposed to and as a response she let out a heart wrenching squeal and started sobbing even more. 16 year old me did not know how to respond and honestly, I still don't. Wife's a hairstylist. Once had someone tell her that he was getting a haircut because he was about to turn himself in cause he had murdered someone. She kept cutting, but excused herself at one point to tell the receptionist to call the cops. Cops came and arrested the guy. Turns out he did actually kill someone. He's now doing life in the can. 
I had a lady who would come in and tell me all about the men she was banging while her husband was deployed in Afghanistan. It made me uncomfortable to say the least. I drew the line when she sent her husband in to get his hair cut when he came back. I quit a week later. You may be the only person in this entire thread to actually answer the goddamned question. Baba. Guys don't really take it past the surface of conversation. But I have a lot of older clients give me advice on women, finance, kids and life in general. Sometimes if you get them in a good conversation they get the stories flowing. I did have one crazy customer. His name was Frank. He was obsessed with this Illuminati bulls, reptilians, the apocalypse. Guy was a well paid drug rep for a big company, played basketball in college. But the amount of stupidity that came out of his mouth still boggles my mind. He stopped coming because the shop owner was really religious, and they got into an argument because according to Frank, Christmas trees are a phallic symbol and Santa Claus is actually Satan. That's what Frank wanted you to believe. Well once an older lady like 60ish told me about how the father of her daughter had sex the first time they met. They are divorced now because I guess he's in butthole but that they always had really great sex. Not too terrible just not something I want a mental image of. Another lady told me that she and her boyfriend were seeing a therapist to fix their relationship and the therapist actually ended up ending the relationship for the boyfriend. Like the therapist gave her a breakup letter and everything. It was like something out of middle school. Poor lady. Comma well once an older lady like 60ish told me about how the father of her daughter had sex the first time they met. They are divorced now because I guess he's in butthole but that they always had really great sex. Not too terrible just not something I want a mental image of. They would have been hot back then. One of my clients with hair to her butt started crying sobbing because her last experience 10 years prior had scared her to the point of not getting it done for that long. They chemically burned off her hair with bleach. She was shaking so bad and terrified the whole cut. She also was newly divorced and had just moved to my town so she knew no one here and was a nervous wreck about her ex finding out where she had moved to. Now she won't go to anyone else because she trusts me not to f up her hair finally. But her last appointment with me she told me not to cut too much because her new boyfriend likes to use her hair to choke her while they bang. She's a mess. But I kind of like her lol. Thought that said with hair on her butt. I was confused. A guy here in Missoula told his barber he was going to shoot some kid. Later that week he leaves his garage door half open with his wife's purse out in plain view. Waits for the kids to enter the garage. Closes the garage door behind him and shoots one of the kids with a shotgun. Then later hid behind Montana's castle doctrine. I can show you links to the article. Pretty fricked. So, so many things. I'm 18 my first week in my chair. And a disheveled guy sits down. I make the mistake of asking him how he is. He goes on a tangent about how his wife dumped him, and he wants to jump off a bridge. Never saw him again. Last week a guy decked out in all marine stuff comes to the front desk and says I don't have two nickels to rub together but I have tools worth a lot of money in my truck. Could I maybe get a cut? I'm starting a job at the VA Monday. So I take the guy. He wants a straight razor skin fade to a flat top. A pretty in-depth haircut. We're talking he's a little weird, probably his alcohol in his thermos. The next thing I know he's telling me he got in a construction accident and the cement blocks crushed his manhood and now he's divorced. Came back after the Monday he was allegedly supposed to have a job. Asked me for a free haircut. I shelled out the money for the cut last time. I couldn't do it again. Nail tech here. I have been told all about past brutalizing husbands and plots from my clients on how they would murder said husbands. One woman told me in lengthy Spanish how she was drunk one night when her husband came in to yell at her about whatever he felt like that evening and after he got up to begin his nightly beatings she finally just stabbed him in the back of his shoulder. She told me she didn't face much court consequences because they ruled it self defense. I could have lived without the awkward silence after that story. Luckily I can hand massage people to sleep. Another opposite response. I once went to get a haircut on my girlfriend's birthday, just so I'll look nice when I went to see her. Sat down and he asked how I wanted my hair. I said a low fade. As he started I gave the usual so what's up with you. He proceeded to tell me how earlier that day he got the call that his brother had been shot down in Jamaica after a shootout with the police. 
Yep, I ended up with a skin fade instead of a low fade and a really awkward 45 minute haircut. Opposite way, I work as a behaviorist for the emotionally disturbed and I had a hairstylist who was nutty. She would take about an hour and a half to cut my hair. I am a guy. All the while rambling about how the government was reading her thoughts and had a satellite that could target individuals and give them heart attacks. She did a great job though. I tried to gently challenge her perceptions, but she wasn't susceptible and it seemed like she was still having a good life. I'm not a stylist but I'm an aesthetician. I had a lady come in for a pedicure and she basically told me her whole life story. She explained to me that she left her whole family and friends in her home country to marry the love of her life. Apparently this man wasn't what her father wanted so he attempted to kill her. Therefore she moved here with her husband and now he's become abusive and crappy to her and her children so they've separated. She looked severely depressed and empty and it was kind of terrifying. Not the stylist, but I made my stylist cry the other day. I haven't seen her since back in February. Back then we talked about how her mom had the same kind of cancer as I did. But in a later stage, I had mine removed back in December. Walked in to get my hair cut after the doctor's appointment that confirmed I had a reoccurrence. Which means the cancer may have never been gone in the first place. I told her I wanted her to shave my head. I had hair past my shoulders. She refused. We talked about why I wanted my head shaved. She broke down. I broke down. In the end she cut it about chin length with some funky layers. Waxed my eyebrows. And the end. Didn't charge me a penny. Told me I had enough crap to deal with as is. And she didn't want my money. Good luck with treatment I hope all goes well. So when's the reverse question gonna be on the front page? Therapists of Reddit. What's something a patient told you that they really should have told their hairstylists? I just want a trim and a blowy today. Thanks. No. I. The other way around. I went to a beauty school to get my hair cut because I was too broke to pay normal salon prices. The student who cut my hair told me how she was only in beauty school so she could learn how to cut and style corpses. Funeral prep. Okay. Weird. But whatever. She then goes on to tell me how much she prefers dead people to the living. Apparently, the living are too twitchy, loud, and emotionally exhausting. She spent most of the haircut telling me to sit completely still and hold my breath so she could get a better feel for how it would be like to style a corpse. At the end of the cut, she said I was her best subject yet and that she'd put a note in my file that she'd be my stylist every visit because she'd never met one of the living who had such a corpse-like calming influence on her before. My haircut came out pretty great. But needless to say, I never went back. That she had been mentally abused by her father making her feel less valuable because she is a girl and that she gets so drunk sometimes that she blacks out and can't remember days at a time. My car broke down and I was stuck in rural BC about 8 years ago. I found a mechanic and ordered the part but it was going to be 2 days to get it in and fix it. I had a bunch of overtime to burn at work so I decided to wait it out. I went to a barber to get a haircut and turns out he had a bunch of hockey memorabilia hanging all over the place. We got to talking while he cut my hair and I told him I was a fan of Ron Hextel and grew up in a town around where he was born. He started getting agitated and finished my haircut. Before I could pay he went into the back and started swearing and hitting stuff until he screamed I freaking hate Ron Hextel and punched something that shattered. He came out a few minutes later calm as could be like nothing ever happened except his knuckles were bleeding. I paid and left and he just swept up like nothing ever happened. I have no idea who he was and I have never been back. Hahaha <laughs> I'm from Alberta and we go over sometimes. Lots of crazy backwards sorts of people. Lots of gas stations with solitary workers drinking and smoking their shifts away ha. Huh? I get my hair cut by a guy who only speaks Spanish. I only speak English. He cuts my hair perfectly every time and we've never had any crazy conversations. I used to go to this deaf guy. I had to mime everything at him. I have never looked better, but he got sick and had to stop working. I think he had some major chronic health issues related to his hearing but I never got the full story. I had a 60-ish year old client with a bad comb over in beauty school. I was 19 who left me a two-page handwritten note about his pissing fetish. I had a client in beauty school who told me about how she randomly decided to abandon her young children. She was a single parent, 
with no note and no one to take care of them to go be homeless 20 years prior, and how one of them only just found her and were angry at her for abandoning them and she thought it was unfought it was unfought it was unfought it was unfought she was still homeless, really picky, always requested me, found out I waxed my friend from school's snatch and got mad that I refused to wax hers, sent me a letter on my last day of school saying I was her best friend with her phone number in it, recently an old man was cross stitching gay pee in our lobby, that was pretty strange, he didn't really talk to me when I cut his hair, I just thought it was worth mentioning, I had a co-worker who recently got fired for yelling at a deaf client, who would always tell clients why I too much information. She would also try to engage other stylists in really inappropriate talk with clients in her chair. She'd always tell them about all her issues with her husbands, or fricked up stuff about how she hates her children. Recently an old man was cross stitching gay pee in our lobby. Somebody has to churn out the crazy stuff on Etsy. I did that to my hairdresser when I was a teenager. My mom used to take my brother and me to her hairdresser cause she would cut our hair cheap and mom knew and trusted her. Also, we lived in the freaking boonies and she was one of maybe 3-4 places to get a hair cut in the whole county. So anyway, she's working on me. My mom's sitting over in the waiting area. And she asks how it's going and is anything new and I start telling her about how my gf at the time is freaking me out cause she's into edge play and keeps talking about how she hates herself. Keep in mind I'm like 16 at this point. A week or so later my mother sits me down to talk about how she's worried about my girlfriend being unhealthy and a bad influence on me. Took me 3-4 years to put 2 and 2 together because I am not always a smart man. Particularly at 16 when sex is involved. I have a client who is so interesting that I'm not sure where to begin. She has been coming into the salon for the past 5 years, and she is the kind of person that always talks in riddles so she is hard to understand sometimes, but this is what I am sure of. First of all, she has had 6 kids, all of which have had some sort of severe mental illness. Only one of them is alive today, and she always leaves him in the car the whole time she tans or gets her hair done. She has told me several times that apparently her ex-husband threw lighter fluid on one of her children and then threw a match on him, burning down the house as well. She says she runs into him quite often in town and she swears one day she will get her revenge and that he is a true psychopath, and that she still lives in fear but apparently there is nothing she can do. She had to find out about her own sister's funeral, who she used to be close with, from the newspaper. Her family completely ignored her and when she showed up and sat in the back of the church be herself, she had to be forcibly escorted out. According to her, she never did anything wrong, and they had no reason to act that way. It really makes me wonder how bad of something would you have to do to to be thrown out of a funeral. She told me in the fall that she wouldn't be in until spring because she was saving her her money so that come spring she could rent a U-Haul to move her and her son to Louisiana to find the people from Duck Dynasty and stay with them. She really thinks that they would get along great and be good friends. She does home health care, and she's always told me about this man that she has taken care of for years. She recently told me she was fired but couldn't give me a clear reason why besides the man's family being crazy. She really is out there, and I always wonder how much is truth and how much she makes up. She's always polite, friendly, and definitely interesting. She has told me several times that apparently her ex-husband threw lighter fluid on one of her children and then threw a match on him, burning down the house as well. But apparently there is nothing she can do. Yeah, okay lady. Another opposite story. Often during the awkward small talk with the barber, I'm asked about my occupation. I'm a doctor. This has led to all sorts of difficult and largely one-sided conversations. Particularly as you're effectively trapped in the chair and people often ignore advice to speak to their GP and continue to press and press. I've had all sorts of public conversations about everything from barbers STDs to skin lesions. The time someone took their top off while cutting my hair to show me his eczema was the time I resolved to lie in future. And since then, I've had all sorts of jobs. I'm Indian and I had a hairstylist ask me if I was Hindu and I said yes. 
Her response was that's really cool, I love going to Atlantic City to the Taj Mahal and I feel weird going to gamble in there. Do your people go there to pray? When I explained to her that the casino was not the actual Taj Mahal and that the Taj Mahal is a mausoleum for a Mughal emperor's wife and has nothing to do with Hinduism she started screaming this is what I get for trying to be tolerant. All of you people always have something to say I was very confused and quiet until my hair was done. I used to work by a barber shop and became good friends with one of the barbers. I'd always go there to get my hair cut. One day I came in and was chatting with my barber friend. The other stylist who had always been there wasn't looking the best. I asked my barber if she was okay. He told me her husband had committed suicide the night before. She came into work just to escape and be distracted for a while. I had the reverse thing happen. Making small talk with the guy cutting my hair. Then silence for a few minutes. Then he says. So you single man at this moment I get a little uneasy. Because it's a pretty personal question to ask someone you met 4 minutes ago. I say yeah. He says. Hey man that's the way to go. Getting laid left and right. Getting it all the time. I was so uncomfortable at this point I had to laugh awkwardly or else I would have had a seizure. I should add there are female stylists sitting around and talking behind us against the opposite side of the room. I was the only customer, and it was silent except for what this guy was saying to me, so they could hear him quite clearly. I'm quiet for about 10 seconds. Then he goes on, but yeah man, there's someone to be said for being in a relationship, you know, you got pee whenever you want it. Just waking up and being like hey, lift your leg baby. I was dumbfounded. He just kept going, making really calm, matter of fact statements about having sex with his girlfriend wife. Then he was like but then you gotta deal with all that other crap. Listening to their problems. Better to be single like you man. I don't know this guy. I had only had my hair cut there a handful of times and he just kept going. I don't know why people assume if you're single you're getting laid all the time. Look, if I was capable of attracting women, I wouldn't be single. My hair stylist was always complaining about the little things in life. But he never spoke about any of his serious life problems. I got my hair cut by him last Christmas. My mother called me three weeks later to tell me that he had just died of AIDS. He's the only person that has cut my hair since I was 6 years old. I'm now 19 and I have shaved my head out of respect and remembrance for that man. Dang. You have my condolences. Here's what a customer of mine said. And I quote, rough, rough. Barky then extended his paw to me and softly whined. P.S. I'm a dog groomer. LOL while I was reading I was like what a freaking psych. Oh. Oh. Wow. So many. Crying. Telling me about how she used to be independent when she was my age. She had gone through abusive relationships. Even moving in with someone in another state after I think a month of long distance dating. She doesn't need me or a motivational speaker. But a psychiatrist. Complaining the whole time about being single, saying sexist things about men. Of course, the issue is with them and search sexism and not with her. She would have ridiculous requirements that almost no one could actually meet and anyone that could probably doesn't want to deal with her. She would do extensive background checks on dates. Her job gives her that ability. And then complain that they were too intimidated by her. Talking about her emotionally abusive husband, in denial that he's abusive. The entire family takes advantage of her and she slowly, so slowly, realizing it. I, of course, don't know what I'm talking about when I bluntly tell her not to put up with it, because I am too young to understand. These people frustrate me so much. I want to help them, but they don't listen. The extent of haircut conversation when you're in college. Stylist. What are you majoring in? Me. I'm majoring in X. Stylist. Doing anything fun this weekend? Me. Oh. Not really. Me and my friends might go out to the bar. Silence the rest of hair cut. I've been cutting hair for 15 years. The best story I can put forward is the following. I worked at a fairly high profile salon and spa in a moderately sized city. The city's mayor's wife was a regular client of the salon. The mayor regularly bought her gift certificates. One day the mayor's wife was in, playing incognito, a rumors were circulating that the mayor had been seen canoodling with a young woman just a few days previous. I get called to the front for a client. I had never met her before. 
I start doing her hair and she is going on and on about the guy she's seeing and his be of a wife. She wouldn't name names but she made it pretty clear who her big daddy was. She was the girl who was seen with the mayor and his wife was in the spa. There was a constant game of avoidance to keep the two separated. The wife left first, paid by her joint visa with her husband. When the mistress tried to pay with his card it was declined. The salon's visa terminal had a security feature that wouldn't allow consecutive purchases to be made at the same business to try and avoid credit card fraud. The mistress was furious. Threatened to sue us. Said that when Big Daddy found out he's closer down ETC etc. We all wish to be able to eavesdrop on the conversation between the two of them. Big Daddy was in big trouble. TL. DR. Mayor's wife and his mistress were in my salon at the same time. I work at a chain salon in a small town in the middle of Illinois. It gets weird on the daily. This is my funeral haircut. That was the start of all the weird things I've heard seen. There's an old guy that comes in occasionally and wants a shampoo and he wears very short shorts and his balls flop out every time. We have another woman who comes in with swastikas tattooed all over her body that says she's not against killing a black person. I've had women shake the whole entire haircut because I took less than a half inch off their 11 inches of hair. People forget that hair grows back. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.